Hello, welcome to Toll Talks. Today we talk about how to get information from the user to the server. Requirements. It's imperative that you understand arrays and associative arrays from the last lecture. If you don't, please go back and practice with them. Now, if you have a web application or any sort of computer application, one of the prerequisites is going to be that the user using your web or your application, I should say, somehow interacts with it. Otherwise, it's not that exciting. So we're going to have to figure out how do we get user input into our PHP web applications. There are several ways you might be able to do this, but the most easiest and the most common and by far the most practiced is forms. So today we're going to be talking about PHP forms. So when I'm trying to get you information from the user for on a web application, I'm going to use a form. So getting input from the users for the forms, the first thing I have to do is actually set the form up. Hello. So today, uh, today's code is going to be pretty quick. Here we are going to just be talking about forms and how to get information to the server. So remember the form is just going to be an HTML form, nothing special about that. Here you can see that I have some different input, uh, some different input tag, a link to see different things about forms. I'm not going to be covering forms in a lot of detail. I will expect you to know this already. So I have a basic, here's my code. Um, I have a basic web page as a form. And then we're going to talk about this in a moment. But I'm going to post back to this form and do something down here on the server side. So before we get to that, let me show you what's what we're kind of going for here so you get an idea. So this is the last lecture we did. So for slash, oh gosh, monster.php. Did I capitalize it? No, I didn't. Good. So you have enter a monster name, slime, and we're actually going to kind of be pl playing around with this idea of a monster game for a couple of different examples. It's a silly, there's no real game to it, just a silly example. Anyway, <clears throat> by the way, this is a color selector that most web browsers support. That was pretty cool. <clears throat> it's actually a string of hex numbers, but most web browsers will present this and give this nice little tablet or palette for you. So basically, we have a simple form, a, si a simple si uh, selection, and then a color. We hit submit, and then here we have the monster name, the monster type, and then the monster color, and then I have a a whites or a, a line of set to be whatever this color is. So that's the I that's the end goal for today's uh, code. It's going to be very quick. All right, going back to the code. So for the form, there are basically three things we have to be very very careful attentive to. The first one itself is the form. So we ignore all this stuff for a moment. Look at the form. I'm going to have a method and an action. Now, if you did a client side class where you only did, you had the form uh, invoke a JavaScript or something, you would not have selected either, you would not have had any, either of these two attributes filled out. Instead, you would have had the, like a, a button or something here with a JavaScript callback. Now we want to actually call to the server. So method, we have basically two options here, post and get. The difference is post will put the data inside the header information. I believe it will kind of obfuscate it a little bit so it's hard to detect. And then the action will be the script you're calling on the server side. We'll get to more about uh, what this link is in a moment. The other option is get, and get will put the information in the URL. So if you ever see a URL with a question mark and then like a list of different values with equal signs, or so like, you know, var1 equals 10, semicolon var2 equals 3, semicolon. And if you see that in your URL, then you're using a get. The reason you might want to use a get is if you want to have the uh, user be able to bookmark that particular state of your web application. For example, Google Maps, it'd be really frustrating if we, they did not use get because then if I send someone the link to where I'm, my directions or whatever, that link's not going to actually tell the other person what I see on my screen. So that's, that's one case you'd want to use get. 
most of the time you will use post. Then I have some input values in between the form and basically input and then the type is important so we have a text box, a radio button and then we have a co type color. Uh, again if the type is equal to color it will give you that nice little palette I showed you earlier and then we're gonna have a type submit and then this will this trigger button this will be the button that triggers the action or the post to the action. Now the action itself is going to be the file on the server side I'm trying to invoke. Now this is very you need to be very careful. This is just like linking a picture to your web page. If I do not have any forward slash or any other directories, it's going to look in the same folder that I'm currently in. Now since this is invoking itself, if you notice monster.php, then it's in the same folder it's already in. I don't have to put anything else. So this is going to be invoking the same script that I'm actually looking at. So I just say monster.php. When I click submit, this information will be sent to this script. Then again, so here we have type text and we have a name variable and a value. Now this is the last part we have to be very careful with the name and the value. So I have name M, type M, and notice all my radio buttons are type M. This is what separates different radio groups. Radio buttons are you have exclusive. So if I check this one, I can't check any of the other ones. And the way they maintain their exclusivity is by the name. So if I wanted like two different sets of radio buttons, I could I would have to have two different sets of names here. But since they're all the same name, I can only select one of these radio buttons and I have the value associated with them. This is the name and the value are going to be very important because this is what's going to be transferred to your PHP script. Also remember when you do your forms that the forms don't act themselves don't act or the inputs themselves I should say don't actually print anything out. So here I have say enter the monster's name, the text box, enter the uh, uh, monster type and then the ooze, goblin, or troll dragon. Otherwise, all I'm going to see is a bunch of radio buttons and not know what value I'm clicking. Then you know, what color is your monster? I'll set the color and I'll have the submit button. You don't actually have to give the value of the submit button, but it's handy and I'll show you why in a moment. Um, you don't always have to do that. So now when I close my form and if I save it, again, pause the video if I'm going too fast. Uh, you can go open up your you should be able to open this up and you should be able to fill this form out and hit submit. Yours won't do anything yet, but we're going to get to that on the next section. So now that we have the, the HTML form itself, the thing that we hopefully you've covered in, say, an intro to web design class, we have the form. How do we get that to the server? That's the next thing we have to talk about. After I have the form set up, the second thing I need to do is handle the form where the user submits back to a server-side PHP script, which will then use the input the user gave. All right, now that we have this form and we're going to invoke to the same file, I, I can invoke or I can have send my action, I can send this to a different file. I can send to anything I want inside my web application. So here we're going to use actually use this information. However, it's vital and very important that we make sure that A, the, the, this is coming from a post, and B, that the, the key exists in our array. Because everything up here is going to be transmitted to the PHP with a name as, as the key for the associative array post or get, and then the value that was entered or selected in the form. So just like we talked about before, you know, last lecture with arrays, this is how PHP is going to get information from the form is through associative arrays. So, first of all, realize that I can get to this page, obviously, without filling out this form because I have to get to this page first before I fill out this form. So, just because a user gets to this page does not mean this information is going to exist. And even if I had multiple forms, I could still get to the submission page without having this information filled out. So I have to make sure the information exists before I try to process it. 
Otherwise, I'm going to get either get an error or I'm get some really weird data, especially when I'm using a database. So never assume that the information you're expecting the user have is going to be there. So the first and the easy way to do is is set and then dollar sign underscore post all capitalized. Dollar sign underscore post all capitalized is the built in array for post. Likewise, dollar sign underscore get for get. So this is one thing we have to have. You have to know what you're trying to get from the web page. So whether it's going to be get or post. The other thing you do is, well, did they just hijack a page or they do a post with no data in it? So I can also say if this is set and is set post, and then I'm going to use the key submit, which remember my name is submit. So that so if they went through this form, then this should be true. I could even go even one further here and say if post submit equals and the value I gave it, so I know they gave the right submit button. In this particular case, I don't do that, but. This is making sure that these two values, one, the post value exists, and two, that this key exists, because as long as this key exists, uh, for now, we're assuming that there's a good chance that they actually submitted through the form. Technically, you should check every individual post key you have to make sure they filled it out correctly. I'm not going to go too much into form validation on this lecture, but later on, we'll deal with that. So here I just echo out a straight line. Here I echo a monster name, then post, and then the name M. Where did I get name M? Name M is the name I gave my input. So this is the key, and whatever I typed in will be the value that this that replaces this. Likewise with type M, and then for the color, I got a little fancy here. I used some inline CSS, background color, and post color M. Because this is actually a string, it will set my style. So the and then I have a I have a under underscore 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 in between the um, the p tag. Yeah, here's a p tag. So this will make this everything inside this p tag green or whatever color I select. So this now this is happening on the server site after the user has hit submit. It's going to output it back to the screen, the same web page. But this time it will build it up. So I hit save. I already have, I have it saved. Let me go back. Um, if I hit recycle, so I, I recent. Okay, maybe I hit recycle. So don't. Let me just let me just go up here and hit enter. There. So I hit enter. When I hit enter, I got to this page monster.php without submitting anything. So it's not that bottom half is not going to even appear. It's going to be false. So we'll say dragon or red dragon we'll say dragon and it's gonna be red because it's a red dragon all right we hit submit and now you see that now it reloads the page but this time the post values were populated so that bottom half did in fact uh, print out so this has been a very quick introduction of forms and we'll be moving on to classes after this here is the problem of the day Please take a couple of seconds and go through it. Um, again, pause the video. You'll need to. Here, you're going to make a quick pretend registration for your web application. You'll need a first name, a last name, email, desired username, and a password. Once the user sum, uh, presses submit, go to a different PHP script in the same folder and print out the information nicely. Obviously, you wouldn't do that in a real in a real application, but this is just a proof of concept. So for review, we've in this lecture we talked about how to set up forms, how to submit the forms to PHP scripts, and then in the PHP scripts, how to use the form data. Thanks for watching. This has been Toll Talks. Hopefully now you understand how array forms work and how to get them in, and are probably beginning to see how important arrays and associative arrays are. Until next time, cheers. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something and enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment or a like below. And again, thank you.